okay we are discussing the minimal polynomial okay minimal polynomial is a polynomial which has a property is a polynomial f of t which has the property minimal polynomial is a polynomial f such that uh, f of capital t equal to 0 okay i will give the precise definition but the question is whether uh, there exists uh, such a polynomial okay I had given an example yesterday, example of a matrix 2 by 2 matrix and a polynomial. So let me recall that I had given this matrix, I am looking at uh, the linear transformation whose matrix relative to the standard basis is this linear transformation on R2 and uh, I defined uh, f of t to be t square minus uh, 2t okay then uh, we noticed yesterday that f of a is a zero matrix okay so at least for this matrix we have shown that there is a polynomial f such that uh, f of a equal to zero in the general case let me give an argument and then give the precise definition we are uh, we are seeking a polynomial f which has the property that f of t is zero given a transformation given an operator t okay in the general case let us look at the following t is a linear operator on a finite dimensional vector space what is the dimension of v as usual it is n what is the dimension of lv n square dimension of lv is n square so if you look at uh, and uh, see lv is the space of uh, all uh, linear operators on v so consider these operators consider the following operators starting from i t t square etc operators on uh, v these are elements of lv etc i go up to t to the n square consider these operators these are in LV. So these are elements, these are vectors in this vector space. These are n square vectors in this vector space, n square plus 1 rather. These are n square plus 1 vectors in the vector space L of V. The dimension of L of V is n square, so these must be linearly dependent. So there exists scalars, not all 0, at least one of them is non 0, not all 0. There exist scalars not all 0 such that uh, scalars I mean uh, alpha i not all 0 such that alpha not i plus alpha 1 t alpha 2 t square etc alpha n square t n square equals a 0 operator. These vectors in uh, this space L of v are linearly dependent so there are scalars at least one of which is not 0 all you have to do is uh, pick up the polynomial from this equation define uh, let us say f of t by alpha naught plus alpha 1 t alpha 2 t square etc plus alpha n square t to the n square the polynomial coming from this left hand side this polynomial has a property that uh, f of t equals the 0 map okay. So we have proved in the general case also for any linear operator on a finite dimensional vector space there is at least one polynomial in fact there are infinitely many there is at least one polynomial f that satisfies f of t equals a 0 operator. What we do is look at uh, see as I described yesterday we look at the collection uh, mt this is the set of all polynomials f so I am I am using uh, f in R t for instance set of all polynomials f with real coefficients over the real variable t such that uh, f of t equals a 0 operator. What we have just now shown is that this is not empty for any operator this set is not empty this is a subset of uh, rt this is a subring 
this also has a property that it is an ideal and uh, this is an ideal in RT, RT is uh, a Euclidean domain, it is also called a principal ideal domain, fx over the variable x is a principal ideal domain, principal ideal domain means that every ideal is generated by uh, a unique element, so there exists M in uh, RT such that uh, such that this uh, capital M sub T is generated by this M, is generated by this M that is uh, every, every polynomial in M T is a multiple of this little m, every polynomial in M T is a multiple of little m, what are the properties of this little m, little m has a property that uh, it is a monic polynomial it is a monic polynomial, the coefficient of the highest degree of m is 1, what is the other property, m has a property that m of t is 0, right, it comes from this, what is the other property that m has, degree of m is less than or equal to degree of f whenever f is such that f of t is 0, okay, so let me just write down these properties, m satisfies the following, the first condition is that it must be such that m of t is 0, such a polynomial is called an annihilating polynomial, so I will just write down on this side annihilating polynomials, it annihilates t, it destroys t that is it takes t to 0 this is called an annihilating polynomial, so m of t any polynomial f that satisfies f of t equal to 0 is called an annihilating polynomial, in particular m of t, m must be an annihilating polynomial, second property m is monic, monic means the <coughs> coefficient of the highest degree is 1, remember if the coefficient of the highest degree is not 1 you can always divide by that number, the coefficient and you will get it, so m is monic that is uh, another property, property 3, we are calling it a minimal polynomial, minimal in what sense, minimal in the sense of degree, if f belongs to RT and uh, f of t equals a 0 polynomial, if f belongs to RT and f of t equal to 0, 0 operator then so I told you that mt is generated by little m which means uh, I also told you that anything in mt is a multiple of this little m okay, so I have this condition degree of uh, m is uh, less than or equal to degree of f, I must uh, have this condition satisfied by m. For example, f could be a multiple of m, in which case the degree of f and degree m are the same, okay, but it cannot be less than the degree of m. Any annihilating polynomial must have degree less, uh, it, it cannot have degree strictly less than the degree of the minimal polynomial, okay. So, this m is called the minimal polynomial, such an m is called. Uh, the minimal polynomial, the minimal polynomial for t, for the operator t, it depends on t, different operators will have different minimal polynomials, okay. Okay, in the, in the worst case when uh, you do not know what uh, an algebra is, what a subring or what an ideal is you can take it for granted that this definition is sensible, there is there is a minimal polynomial for each operator, okay. Okay, uh, let us look at some examples, but maybe before that uh, I need to tell you the relationship uh, between the minimal polynomial, so we are discussing eigenvalues, eigenvectors, what is the relationship, what is the relationship between the minimal polynomial and uh, the eigenvalues, let us first uh, 
settle this. So let me just prove the following, following result T is an LV and V is finite dimensional and so I will always reserve this little m for the minimal polynomial for an operator and the characteristic polynomial I will reserve P okay. So m for me will always be the minimal polynomial for T and P will be the characteristic polynomial. P will be the characteristic polynomial any other annihilating polynomial I will use F. The zeros of uh, the minimal polynomial and the characteristic polynomial for an operator P are the same. Okay, this is the connection. The connection between the minimal polynomial and the characteristic polynomial is that they have the same zeros. Same zeros means uh, that is uh, m of uh, lambda equals zero if and only if p of lambda equals zero. If lambda is uh, a root of the equation m of t equals zero, then lambda is also a root of the equation p of t equals zero. Okay. Okay. How do you prove it? Can you see that there is a connection now between uh, P is uh, the characteristic polynomial. So any root of uh, the equation P t equal to zero lambda is an eigenvalue. So the zeros of the minimal polynomial are the eigenvalues of the operator. Proof. Uh, we need to show that. Uh, let uh, lambda be such that. T x equals lambda x for some x not equal to zero. That is, lambda is an eigenvalue of t. X is a corresponding eigenvector. Okay, we we are actually proving the. Uh, sufficiency part first yeah if lambda is an eigenvalue then I am showing that uh, uh, lambda is uh, 0 of the minimal polynomial okay. Is this okay mtx equals uh, 0 do you agree with this first m is a minimal polynomial so it is an annihilating polynomial. So for any x, mtx is 0 in particular for this eigenvector, 0 is mtx but you remember this result that we proved uh, mtx if lambda is an eigenvalue this can be written as m lambda x tx equals lambda x we saw this result uh, in the last lecture this is m lambda into x, m lambda is a number x is a vector x is an eigenvector so it is not 0 m lambda must be 0. So one part is very simple if lambda satisfies p lambda equal to 0 then we have shown m lambda is 0 okay we have only used the fact that m t x is m lambda x conversely let us suppose that m lambda is 0 we must produce a vector we must show that there exists a vector let us say y such that t y equals lambda y. we must show that there exists a vector y not equal to 0 such that t y equals lambda y it would then mean that lambda is an Eigen value and so p of lambda is 0 okay m lambda equal to 0 
uh, means that uh, if I use t as uh, the variable for the polynomial m do you agree that uh, I can write m of t as uh, t minus lambda into q of t if lambda is a 0 of m of t equal to 0 then t minus lambda is a factor of m of t t minus lambda is a factor of m of t this is this is by definition what do you know about q of t the degree of q is at least one is precisely one less than the degree of m so q cannot be an annihilating polynomial where q cannot be an annihilating polynomial that is q of capital T cannot be the 0 polynomial the reason since degree of q is strictly less than degree of m and uh, any polynomial of degree less than the minimal degree of the minimal polynomial cannot be an annihilating polynomial so q of t is not the 0 operator q of t not the 0 operator means that uh, there is one non zero at least one non zero vector x such that q of t x is not 0 there exists x not equal to 0 such that q of t x is not 0 that is the meaning of saying that an operator is not 0 this is uh, this will be my Eigen vector so I will call this uh, y call y as q t x then for one thing y is not 0 also I will start with this 0 mt x that must be 0 because mt is a minimal polynomial 0 equal to mt x this is written as uh, t minus lambda i times the polynomial q into x this is t minus lambda i q t x is y into y so what I have is uh, what I have is t y equals lambda y with y not equal to 0 so I have shown that uh, y is an Eigen vector corresponding to the Eigen value lambda in terms of p this means p of lambda is 0 okay now this is an important connection between uh, the minimal polynomial and the characteristic polynomial they have the same roots except for multiplicities okay remember that that we have not shown we have not shown that the multiplicities are the same okay but they have the same roots this is an important point yeah, maybe we should now look at examples okay some numerical examples my first example will be uh, one uh, that uh, exemplifies this diagonalizability I realized I have not given an example so for diagonalizability let me first uh, do an example uh, and also consider the examples that we have discussed earlier we have discussed at least two examples the first example of an operator which does not have an Eigen value so it is not diagonalizable second example of an operator which uh, has enough Eigen values but not enough Eigen vectors again it is not diagonalizable third example that I am going to discuss now will be diagonalizable uh, this will also tell you what uh, diagonalizability means for matrices if it is not uh, already clear to you so I am going to discuss examples and also by the side discuss uh, uh, the minimal polynomials okay okay the first one let me consider the operator t whose uh, matrix relative to the standard basis is given by this 3 by 3 matrix I will take this matrix this is the matrix uh, of uh, a linear operator relative to the standard basis let us say I will leave it to you for uh, verifying that the characteristic polynomial of this matrix uh, we are using P the characteristic polynomial of this matrix please check that it is uh, go with a minus sign so I will say characteristic equation for this problem uh, the characteristic equation will be please verify that it is uh, lambda plus 1 the whole square 
into lambda minus 3 this is the characteristic equation of this matrix okay expand this 3 by 3 determinant a minus lambda equal to 0. The eigenvalue minus 1 comes twice eigenvalue 1 comes once what I know is the eigenvectors corresponding to one eigenvector corresponding to minus 1 and the eigenvector corresponding to 3 are independent I must verify if minus 1 the Eigen space corresponding to minus 1 has dimension 2 I must verify if the Eigen space corresponding to the Eigen value minus 1 has dimension 2 okay okay what is uh, lambda equals minus 1 so I need to go back to this look at uh, look at the case lambda 1 is minus 1. I am looking at uh, the number of independent solutions of this equation ax equals minus uh, lambda 1 x that is a plus uh, lambda 1 i a plus i x I must solve this is that correct minus 1 yeah I, I meant lambda 1 x so I meant lambda 1 x okay so I have a x so a plus lambda 1 lambda minus 1 what is going on yeah minus lambda 1 yeah so I need to solve this a plus i x equal to 0 so what are those equations these equations are minus 8 4 4 minus 8 I must add 1 4 4 minus 16 8 8 into x the row reduced echelon form of this matrix will have only one non zero row two zero rows the first row is minus 2 1 1 or if you want you can say it is 1 minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 in any case the number of solutions of this equation is 2 the rank of this matrix is 1 the row rank of this matrix is 1 because second and third rows are just multiples of the first row so the row rank of this matrix is 1 which means the null space uh, will have uh, nullity is 2 so null space has dimension 2 so there are two independent solutions of this equation okay let us compute for uh, completeness I have uh, there is only one equation there is only one equation that I must uh, solve I must uh, write down two independent solution this is one equation and three unknowns I can fix two of them so I will take x3 to be 1 for the first case and x2 equal to 1 so I have these uh, let us say x2 equals 2 so x1 is 1 is that okay minus 2 plus 2 plus 1 so that is not 0 so I am taking x3 I can take x3 to be 0 x2 is 2 x1 is 1 so that gives me one vector let me write x1 the superscript 1 so that is uh, one vector for me 1 2 0 I will write down another vector for the same equation uh, let us say that comes from I will write that here another choice is uh, x3 x1 sorry x2 is 0 x3 is uh, 2 then uh, x1 is 1 that gives me another independent vector which is uh, I think I have not written correctly here 1 2 0 uh, x2 yeah 1 0 2 right is that correct 1 0 2 x2 and x3 behave similarly so I can interchange their roles that is what I have done so this is another this is one this is another obviously they are independent so I have two independent uh, Eigen vectors for the Eigen value minus 1 which comes twice as uh, an Eigen value okay let us also calculate uh, an Eigen vector for the Eigen value 3 I need to solve Ax uh, equals 3x A minus 3x so I must solve minus 12 4 4 
minus 8 uh, a minus 3 0 is that correct 4 minus 16 8 7 minus 3 4 <coughs> I am looking at uh, a minus 3 minus 12 0 4 all the other entries are the same so uh, this into x I need to do row reduced uh, okay maybe just by observation or let us let us do this quickly minus 2 1 1 let us say 2 minus 1 1 that is the first equation second equation is uh, 2 0 1 I divide by uh, 4 4 minus 2 minus 1 I divide by minus 4 minus 2 minus 1 that is correct second row I am dividing by 4 minus 4 2 0 minus 1 I am dividing by minus 4 3 I am dividing by minus 4 3 minus 1 minus 1 okay 1 minus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 2 0 minus 1 4 minus 2 minus 1 and then minus 2 times this plus this 1 minus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 minus uh, 2 times this that is 2 by 3 uh, 2 by 3 minus 1 minus 1 by 3 minus 4 times this plus this okay so I have uh, this to be 0 uh, 4 by 3 minus 2 that is minus 2 by 3. Uh, minus 4 times this 4 by 3 minus 1 minus 1 by 3 1 by 3 okay so please check I can remove the last row it is the same as the second row without uh, reducing it to the row reduced echelon form etc. okay now I see that uh, I must fix x1 x2 x3 can be determined uniquely okay same example I can fix x1 let me multiply by minus 3 3 x1 minus x2 minus x3 multiply this by 3 2 x 2 minus x 3 let me take x 1 to be 3 maybe x 1 to be 1 then I must solve for these 2 x 2 plus x 3 is 3 2 x 2 minus x 3 is 0 3 x 3 3 x 2 is 3 x 2 is 1 what is x1 x2 is 1 sorry x3 x1 has been fixed x3 is 2 I'll call this a third vector x3 first coordinate is 1 second coordinate is 1 third coordinate is 2 so please check that this is another Eigen vector 1 1 2 minus 12 plus 4 plus 8 0 minus 8 plus 8 minus 16 plus 8 plus 8 okay so this is an Eigen vector for the Eigen value 3 now look at all these 3 vectors I will use this portion now script B equals x1 x2 x3 these uh, these 2 vectors x1 and x2 obviously are independent and uh, x3 must be independent with x1 x2 because x1 x2 correspond to the Eigen value minus 1 x3 correspond to 3 so these 3 are linear independent vectors so this forms a basis for R3 such that each vector is an Eigen vector so the operator T that we started with must be diagonalizable in particular in particular this matrix A is diagonalizable what is the meaning of A being diagonalizable let us uh, 
call P as a matrix whose entries uh, are the columns x1, x2, x3. I define a new matrix P whose columns are the eigenvectors taken in this order. <coughs> First correspond to minus 1, second corresponds to 3. Is this P invertible? P is invertible because the columns are independent so the uh, homogeneous equation P x equal to 0 has x equal to 0 as the only solution. This P is invertible and uh, P is invertible and look at AP. We have done this calculation before. AP is A into x1, x2, x3. This A can be brought inside. AX1, AX2, AX3. But x1, x2, x3 are the eigen values. So this is uh, uh, minus 1, right? Minus uh, x1, minus x1, 3, x3. Minus 1, minus 1 are the eigen values for the first two vectors. So for the third one, 3 is eigen vector, right? Can I write this as? Uh, can I write this as x1, x2, x3 into minus 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 3. I can. Please check this. I can write it in this manner. In our notation, this matrix is P. Let me call the other matrix as D. D stands for uh, the diagonal matrix. Sorry. Yes. This is P into D. Okay. Where D is that is A equals P D P inverse. You can also look at uh, P inverse AP as D. This is what diagonalizability for a matrix means. This is what diagonalizability for a matrix means. I have also mentioned this when we wrote down the matrix of a linear transformation. A is similar to the diagonal matrix D. A is similar to the diagonal matrix D. And so A is diagonalizable. T is diagonalizable if and only if A is diagonalizable. A is diagonalizable means that A must be similar to a diagonal matrix. Okay, so this is the first example of uh, a matrix that uh, has been shown to be diagonalizable. What is the minimal polynomial for this matrix? We have written down the characteristic polynomial. Let me recall the characteristic polynomial. I am using the notation P for this matrix is uh, lambda plus 1 uh, uh, to the 2 into lambda minus 3. probably it goes with the minus sign but does not matter. I am looking at P of lambda equals 0. Okay. So the characteristic polynomial is lambda plus 1 square lambda minus 3. What is the minimal polynomial for this? Where do we start with? What is the first choice for the minimal polynomial? Lambda plus 1 into lambda minus 3. Okay. One choice is lambda plus 1 into lambda minus 3. Uh, what is the other choice? It must, uh, it must also have uh, another possibility is lambda plus one into lambda minus three whole square, right? The number of the zeros must coincide. Okay. But for this matrix, I want you to verify that the minimal polynomial is just lambda plus 1 into lambda minus 3. 
please verify for this matrix that the minimal polynomial is lambda plus 1 into lambda minus 3 the reason uh, why this must be true I will explain uh, a little later but this can be verified by just two matrix multiplication you need to verify that uh, m of a equals 0 that is a plus i into a minus 3i is 0 okay. So please verify in this example that the minimal polynomial is this and observe that the minimal polynomial is a product of uh, distinct linear factors this example the minimal polynomial is a product of distinct linear factors that is it does not have lambda plus 1 whole square or lambda minus 3 whole square it is just a product of these two distinct linear factors okay that is the minimal polynomial for this example. Let us go back to the second example the second example that we discussed earlier tell me if the entries uh, are correct 3 1 minus 1 2 2 minus 1 2 2 0 can you just check and tell me if this is the second example this is an example of a matrix which is not diagonalizable in spite of the fact that the eigenvalues exist are the entries okay okay what is the characteristic polynomial for this matrix we have verified uh, what uh, lambda minus 1 the whole square into lambda minus 2 hmm? okay lambda minus 1 into lambda minus 2 whole square this matrix is not diagonalizable. simply because uh, it is defective uh, with regard to the number of Eigen vectors there is no problem with the Eigen values Eigen values are there 1 comes uh, with multiplicity 1 2 comes with multiplicity 2 but it does not have enough Eigen vectors it has only 2 Eigen vectors that is if you look at the matrix uh, lambda minus if you look at the matrix uh, A minus uh, 2i we have discussed the example before I just want to consolidate if you look at the matrix A minus 2y that is 1 1 minus 1 2 0 minus 1 2 2 minus 2 okay you observe that the third row is the same I mean it is a multiple of the second so I can delete it the rank is 2 the rank of this matrix is 2 the nullity of this matrix uh, is 1 that is nullity of the linear transformation whose matrix is this nullity is 1 which means the dimension of the null space of a minus 2i is 1 but dimension of null space of a minus 2i is precisely the Eigen space the Eigen space is of dimension 1 okay so there is only one Eigen vector corresponding to the Eigen value 2 there is one Eigen vector corresponding to 1 in any case I do not have 3 Eigen vector 3 independent Eigen vectors for this matrix so this is not diagonalizable okay so please check that uh, nullity uh, check that the Eigen space corresponding to the Eigen value 2 that is 1 dimension of the Eigen space corresponding to the second Eigen value is 1 and so there are only two independent Eigen vectors for this matrix A so A is not diagonalizable what are the choices for the minimal polynomial the choices are lambda minus 1 into lambda minus 2 lambda minus 1 whole square into lambda minus 2 or lambda minus 1 into lambda minus 2 whole square okay these are the possible choices I want you to verify in this example that this is the same as the minimal polynomial. please verify that the minimal polynomial in this example is the same as the characteristic polynomial I told you there are three choices for the minimal polynomial one is lambda minus 1 into lambda minus 2 you can verify a minus i into a minus 2i is not 0 
the other, other choice is lambda minus 1 whole square into lambda minus 2 that is a minus i the whole square into a minus 2i verify that that is also not 0 finally this is the other choice. verify that m lambda is p lambda okay in this example finally if you look at the, the third example which is the first example the matrix a is 0 minus 1 1 0 this simply does not have Eigen values what is the characteristic polynomial for this matrix the characteristic polynomial is lambda square plus 1 if you look at this as a complex matrix this can be factorized as lambda plus i into lambda minus i so as a complex matrix this, this has uh, i and minus i as the Eigen values okay the minimal polynomial is a product of uh, if you look at it as a complex matrix then the minimal polynomial will have to have both these roots you please also verify that uh, a square plus i equals 0 and so the minimal polynomial in this example is equal to the characteristic polynomial okay the minimal polynomial is a characteristic polynomial for the reason that a square plus i is 0 and that both the, both the factors both the roots minus i and plus i must appear in the minimal polynomial okay okay probably i'll stop here